Okay, um, hello everybody again and welcome to the second in our series of interviews we're holding in the run-up to this year's Outlook, which organised by Adana is known as the world's premier non-wovens, hygiene, personal care and wipes products conference. Uh, my name's Hayden Davis and I'm the editor here at Sustainable Non-wovens. We're a media partner with Adana and we're working closely together to bring you a sneak preview of what you can expect from this year's event. This year Outlook will take place online from April 21st to 23rd and to date has more than 30 speakers lined up offering a diverse range of panel discussions and topical presentations. Today it's my pleasure to welcome Per Brandberg. Uh, per is a research analyst at Euro Monitor International and at the conference pair you're going to be talking about the disposable hygiene marketplace in a post-Covid world. Um, so the last you last spoke at Outlook in September 2020 when we were at the height of the Covid-19 pandemic can you briefly outline, pair the issues you'll be addressing when the event reconvenes in April? Yeah, sure. So uh, I will, like I said, coming out of the height of uh, the pandemic and COVID-19, uh, I will take a further look into how COVID-19 has impacted the industry and consumers and also the companies that are active within the market. And then I'll take a quick look at what the future might entail. And to do this, I'll be using our annual tissue and hygiene research uh, that we published in February 2021, which has all the latest data and insights into the overall market impact, but also in the specific categories. Okay, great. Um, so it's fair to say the pandemic has inevitably altered consumer behavior, um, such as an increasing focus on home and personal hygiene. Uh, what in your view, pair are the, the key global trends currently impacting the AHP sector? Um, and how would you say this compares to the pre-COVID era? Yeah, so there are obviously a lot of uh, trends that are impacting the global global market or global sector. But uh, if I summarize it up, I would say we can see three really big trends that are impacting. And the two of these were already there before Corona. Uh, so this is the acceleration of e-commerce where uh, this was obviously still gaining traction before uh, the pandemic, but with 2020 people not feeling safe or even not being able to go to the physical stores, mm. uh, opted instead to, to use the e-commerce uh, channel to, to get their products. And then we also have the trend that is uh, a bit from more from the consumer side, uh, which is the value for money or the affordability. Consumers really uh, are uh, reprioritizing what to spend their money on and uh, what to pay the extra price points for. So these are two trends that we've, we've, we have definitely seen them before the pandemic, but they have been further strengthened uh, through Corona. And then we have one, which is a, a direct effect of the pandemic. And this is, like you said, the sustained demand as a result of uh, heightened uh, hygiene concerns. So either personal hygiene or hygiene for our homes and the space around us. Uh, which has created a higher level of demand than we saw before. And this is something that will continue um, in the coming years as well. Okay, thanks. Um, so looking at sustainability and in particular, encouraging greater sustainable choices on a consumer level, how difficult is it to strike a balance between potentially more expensive premium and sustainable items and the need for affordability in the AHP sector? Yeah, so it's, it's always hard to find that balance, right? Finding the uh, balance between having a higher price point and having these premium features versus what a consumer actually wants to pay that higher price for. And then if you add the sustainability into that, which usually has a higher price point, uh, but if you use like reusable products, it, it can be more valuable in the long run. So it's, it's very hard to find the balance and it's something that has been gaining traction uh, for a number of years and uh, we can see that many big companies are focusing on this and are actually looking into how to balance this premium and sustainable products versus the affordability factor that consumers also um, also consider. Okay um, and what in your opinion do companies need to do to help get this message across to consumers? So from what we've seen it's uh, really important for the companies to accurately pinpoint and focus on what the consumer actually wants from the product. 
So mm -hmm. what they would be willing to pay more for, uh, for the enhanced features or the uh, specific, specific qualities that their products have. So for example, with uh, reusable solutions uh, within adult incontinence, we have seen more innovation towards uh, the design and the aesthetics of the product which uh, which make it more effective and also more discreet and this is something that is really uh, really appealing to consumers and have led to them actually wanting to pay a bit more for this these features so it's it's all about the being very accurate in finding what and how much the consumers will pay for certain features um, so i think this is also relevant for markets with potential huge growth for the AHP sector, such as India and Africa. Um, what sort of strategies could we see here as companies strive to reach consumers in these markets? Yeah, I agree. It's, it can even be more important there uh, in these developing regions to actually show the value for money that consumers are getting. And uh, we've seen that in developing markets, reusable options are often an affordable alternative to the disposable products. And uh, this can be shown through the Your Monitoring International Survey, where we asked uh, respondents how many were using reusable adult incontinence products. And uh, we can see that India ranked very high there with uh, over 50% of the respondents saying that they actually used the reusable adult incontinence products. And comparing this to a uh, developed region, we can see that in UK, the respondents were around 15% that used it. So there is a lot of interest and potential there. And again, uh, companies need to pinpoint the consumer's needs and uh, what the consumer wants and how much they're willing to pay for uh, these extra features, which is uh, crucial for the companies to reach the uh, bigger consumer base. Okay. Um, I think another important factor is the, the, uh, the first phase of the European Union's single use plastics directive which will come into force later this year. Is the AHP sector prepared for this, do you think, Pear? And um, how much of an impact could this have on the industry? Yeah, and not only you know, for uh, the hygiene industry, but this will impact a bunch of different markets. And uh, I think what we will see is uh, more recycled material in certain products and the, even in the packaging of the products. So what we already seen in 2020, we saw multiple products launched with the sustainability in mind. So, for example, in Finland, there was a 100% uh, biodegradable panty liner. And then in Romania, we had uh, bamboo-based diapers. And even uh, uh, there were organic tampons that were uh, packaged in a recyclable uh, material in uh, the Czech Republic. And this is just to name a few. Mm -hmm. So uh, further focus on sustainability and the reusable products uh, will definitely still be in the, in the mind of the consumers and in the companies. And uh, it will be challenging and it will be interesting to see uh, how the industry deals with it. Mm, sure, so sort of speaking of these challenges um, that the industry will face over the next three to five years, um, would you say that these challenges also represent opportunities for some companies? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, as we're getting away from the COVID world, so to speak, and um, we will return to what we had before, where developed regions uh, will have to, companies there will have to return to the challenge in finding opportunities for further growth via innovation or uh, new product developments. And in developer regions, the challenge and also opportunity will be for companies to uh, actually get into the large uh, untapped potential that is there. So uh, we can see that in, during COVID-19, uh, we it placed affordability at the top of the agenda in many households. Sure. And yeah. uh, as markets recover, more opportunities for growth uh, through innovation will open up and uh, a clear understanding of consumers' uh, kind of wish list, so to speak, like what they want uh, in terms of product features and actually the willingness uh, for them to pay for these product features will help tap into the available opportunities more efficiently. And then we could, this, uh, these innovations could be coupled with, uh, like we've already spoken about, sustainable and reusable mm -hmm. products, mm -hmm. and also uh, products that uh, not only put the actual product in the center, but also focuses on the well-being, mental and physical of, uh, 
of the consumer. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that, Per. Um, I think that wraps things up for today. We don't want to give too much away before before the conference itself, do we? And um, thank you everyone for listening uh, to hear more from Pear on these key topics, as well as the other presentations and panel discussions. Um, you can go to adana.org and you can sign up for Outlook there. Um, thanks again, Pear. And I look forward to seeing you again in April. Thank you. Bye-bye.